if you come from other languages like JavaScript or Python or C++ or C Sharp or whatever, and you come into Go, a lot of things can be very complicated or confusing. And this is this has nothing to do with your skill level. This has to do with the different way of the approach you need to take if you want to be a Golang programmer. And what do I mean with a different approach? You need to start thinking as... You need to start think in the way of data. Everything is just data, right? And of course, all these other languages like JavaScript, uh, they, they, they are great, they are amazing, Python, amazing languages, but they have a different way of thinking. And if you need to jump into Golang, then you're gonna basically try to utilize what you have learned in these other languages, which is completely normal, but that's going to produce not the correct code or not the correct approach of doing things. And um, this is going to be a video that is going to clarify a little bit uh, how to change your mindset on how to write Go code. Back to the basics, keep it very simple, right? So let's get started into this. So the reason why I'm doing this video, guys, by the way, is because uh, I'm making a lot of Golang videos and I still see people asking me, yeah, but this sounds a little bit confusing for me coming from, from Python or, uh, but yeah, and, 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 and is this a class? Do I need to use this and all that stuff? And I wanna basically debunk all that um, shenanigans, right? So first of all, let's make something very simple. Let's, let's, let's do the classic stuff. Let's make uh, a type book here, right? And this book is going to be a structure, okay? And let's give it some fields. We're gonna say title string. Let's keep it very simple, right? Title, uh, maybe an author or something is also gonna be a string. And then we're gonna say num pages. This is just some decoration here, right? And then we're gonna say, um, for example, is saved or something is gonna be a Boolean. And then we're gonna have um, saved at is gonna be a time time, right? Something like that. Okay, cool. So basically, a lot of people think of these structures as objects or classes, which uh, if you think about it as objects is not such a bad thing, but thinking about them as classes is completely uh, the wrong way of thinking. So you need to see a structure as just, a collection is not the right word, as an envelope, as a group is maybe also not the correct word, but like a, a wrapper around just, data, simple data, a string, an integer, a bool. And this is basically encapsulated into a, an, an, a global name, book, right? And if you wanna access a title or another or pages, you're just gonna call book.title, very simple, right? But that's the thing, right? It's very simple, but still book.title, it directly reflects on how we use classes because book is going to be this entity which could have some properties, right? But in Golang, this book is just a simple uh, data structure, holding fields, holding member fields. And the only way, there are actually two things we can do with this book, right? There's only two things we can do. It's very simple, two things we can do with this structure. And that's basically one, Let's do a comment here. One is going to be, we're gonna read data, read data from this book. And then we're gonna write data into this book. That's the only thing we can do. Nothing more and nothing less. And how do we read and how do we write data from it? Well, if we wanna do stuff with book, we can only do that by using functions it's as simple as that only functions so for example if i want to save this book and i'm going to explicitly write this a little bit differently and the only reason why i'm doing this is so you can change your mindset a little bit so let's say we want to save this book so we're going to say a function we're going to call this save book <clears throat> right and if you want to save a book what do we need? We need the book, right? So we're gonna say book, which is going to be a book, right? That is simple. And then we're gonna say book dot uh, is saved is gonna be true, right? And then we're gonna say book dot uh, saved at is going to be uh, time now. It's that easy. But I already see your eyebrows, your eyebrows frown because 
first of all, why are we writing this uh, like this simple function here, like just a plain function? Golang has something like uh, method receivers and all that stuff. That's true. But if we write this like the go way, because it's just syntactic sugar, what I'm going to do right now is just syntactic sugar that is allowed by the compiler is do something like book, book, save book, right? And then we're going to copy these two fields here, right? We're going to paste them in. And now we have these two functions are exactly the same. But if you look at this, what we see is that this looks a lot like some kind of object oriented approach where we have this book and we have a method attached to that book. And we're going to do stuff with that book. And that's where the confusion comes in, in my opinion. That's why a lot of people are confused here. So let's think of, let's delete this function and let's keep this, the old school C way function here, right? Now there is, the magic is gone, right? The, 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 the wizardry and witchcraft is completely uh, disappeared from the screen because right now we have a simple function like we know that in a lot of other languages and we have just a book and we're gonna modify these, um, modify the state of the book. But, 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 what do we know here? We know that this book here is a function argument. And what do we know? That this book is going to get copied into the stack of this function, right? It's going to get copied into the stack. The same way here, right? The same way with this function, which are, again, these two functions are completely the same. This book, is, this is just a function, right, guys? This is just a function. It's a syntactic sugar that is the same as this. This book is going to get copied into the stack of this function, which means that we are going to modify here a copy of the book, which also means, programming 101, that at the end, we're gonna burn the book, right? We're gonna burn the book. The stack is going to get cleaned up and everything we did is going to waste because we have a copy. So if we wanna modify state, what we need to do is we need to, I'm gonna delete this thing again. <coughs> what we need to do is we need to have a pointer to this book. So we can modify, we don't modify the copy, we modify the memory of that book. So it's reflected everywhere we have a reference to that book. So now the stack is going to get cleaned up, but this is a pointer, so the, the, the values we changed are going to be persisted, right? So now this looks a little bit different already, right? Because now it's very simple to understand. It's just a function takes in a book. Okay, it's a pointer to the book. Uh, and, and we said book is safe, true, safe, that. It's, it's GG well played. The, the game's over. The, the, uh, close. Let's close this pull request, right? But in Golang, like I said before, they give us the opportunity to make this a little bit less tedious, make it a little bit more maybe convenient and that's by having a function receiver or a method receiver whatever you guys gonna call that and most of the time you're gonna see b uh pointed to book here right but let's keep it simple let's make this reflect uh the function we already have so we're gonna say book and then we need to say save book here right and then we're gonna do um we're gonna copy these things here and paste them in right so now we have two equal functions here again, right? We have this book, which now, instead of a copy of the book, we're gonna have the actual pointer of this book. And now we can modify the data, which is exactly the same as this function here. But if you come from another language and you see a function like this, you're directly going to be interconnected with the object-oriented approach paradigm, because it looks the same. Right? It looks kind of the same. But if you take a look at this, it's a little bit different. Although, it's going to do the exact same thing. That's how you need to see. This, how, this is how you need to... Um, I don't know how the, the correct word, but this is how you need to perceive Golang programming. 
right? It's just data. There is no object. It's just a structure that holds data. And the only thing you're going to do is you're going to read that data or you're going to manipulate that data. And if you manipulate that data or even read, the only way you can do that is by functions. Of course, if you want to read, you can access the, the object directly, of course. But if you want to modify stuff or you want to operate, you want to do some modifications, operations on that structure, you're going to use procedure, you're going to use functions. So Golang is all about, is only about structures, data, and functions. That's the only thing you need to know. And if you use that approach a little bit more, if you, that approach, if you use that narrative, that thinking a little bit more, it's going to get more clear for you. Or maybe even more confusing, who knows, right? So, um, I know this sounds a little bit weird, this video, but it's a very important one because I understand completely that you are confused sometimes. And I hope this video has completely enlightened you in this way. So if you like this video, consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments, jump into my Discord community. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next live stream or video. Take care.